John in London, good morning. It's June 25th. My video is all about recovery from addiction to either substance or behaviour. My addictive substance, alcohol, my behaviour equally addictive around people, places and things. Trying to be in the right place with the right people, with the right things and doing the right things. Trying to be perfect and never so. And being an ardent drinker of, I don't know where it came from, well I do my family always good drinkers and my father certainly on reflection and looking back had no power over alcohol he used it and needed it and then wanted it and then life was around an addiction and an addiction to fear in the end I suspect but that's just the way it is we get used to either being fearful or having courage and we can be swayed either way on any given day depending on what's going on so recovery for me how did I ever get there why do I talk about it well recovery wasn't something which I came to easily and I didn't know what it was to be an addict until I was an addict and I couldn't believe people could be addicted to anything simply because if they had enough willpower they could get themselves sorted and then I found I could not sort out my own mess in terms of life people places and things all went down the crapper or words to that effect I can think of worse words often used in the fellowship where I go to get a bit of sense so how did I get to recovery yes people places things the right people in the right place doing the right things not drinking so if we're addicted to one sort of behavior maybe we can become accustomed to another sort of behavior not drinking on a daily basis and I had to have a moment of clarity where I said to myself no matter how much willpower I've got no matter what I do I still drink 24-7 in the end and I don't know how to get myself out of this and life is so bad I can't imagine it being any worse so I asked for help and where did I ask? I went to professionals of course first who got me back on track dried me out a bit and then said maybe the best thing for you to do is go to a fellowship called AA Alcoholics Anonymous and reluctantly and begrudgingly I did and what I found was a bunch of happy people and on first encounter I was overwhelmed by the experience and ran away again and it took another five years to go back but I guess the seeds were sown that some people had found a way out of it and if I couldn't do it on my own and they seem to have the answer to my problems then maybe I ought to try again and I did and it took a, a sort of stop start trying to let go of my willpower stop looking at and judging people and just get to the point where I said okay I'm baffled I just don't know what to do I better just stay long enough and see what it means to be sober and those first days of recovery were very very difficult because drink was only an arm's length away and it still is because it surrounds us all day long so how is it that some people can stay sober well mainly because they associate with other people who stay sober and they work on their problems and find solutions today without a drink in hand and that's not easy it's not easy to find recovery so AA Alcoholics Anonymous is part of my story a big part which is why I share that it is part of my story but I can only speak for myself and that's what I do every single person in AA is unique and authentic and can share what they share wherever they like it's their choice so I choose to share a bit of experience strength and hope here so I make no apologies for that and as far as anonymity is concerned it's of prime importance anonymity is a place it offers sanctuary and a place to go where we can tell the truth of who we are good bad and ugly and it's the same as anything else anonymity is a sanctuary to find out who we are the truth and then we can share it as we will and as we can with those around us so it's always personal choice and personal freedom and the good news about fellowship is there are no rules, laws or regulations applying to being in the fellowship. All you need is a desire to stop drinking.
So what's on my mind today? Well, uh, a bit later there's a convention in my local vicinity, the Alcoholics Anonymous Convention, not so anonymous because it's at the Town Hall in Chelsea, all day. Anyone with a desire to stop drinking I suspect is welcome. I don't know how welcome I'll be, but I'm sure I will be. All my mates go there, my friends, and uh, tolerance and love, we all say. And there will be speakers and stuff going on. So that's in prospect. There's a disco dance at the end of it. Uh, unfortunately, my feet don't work too well, so I shan't be going to that bit. But I shall welcome the opportunity. It stays open for everyone. I'm sure I could sit there and watch, but then there will be a wall flare, wouldn't I? I doubt it somehow. Anyway, what's on my mind for the 25th of June um, from previous years and also today? And what follows in this video are daily reflections from previous years and then the Step 6 reading from the 12 and 12, 12 Steps and 12 Traditions, all about defects of character, which I can have in abundance. The defects of character or sometimes people say areas of development or areas where I fall down is overly fearful overly needing to put on a brave face and hide the truth of who I am an ego which will stop me sharing because I feel guilty and shameful about some aspect of me well these days less so the more people know the better people can be in responding to me or walking past me whichever they choose so things on my mind from previous years and this year this year uh, somebody wrote to me and said you started me on this concept of now living and I began to listen to Eckhart Tolle and discovered that the thoughts mostly negative that have come into my mind are part of the human condition and that some religions have known about this for years very true I am learning that living in the now moment is the answer and now though slowly I am becoming aware of where my ego starts the negative talk that at least I am becoming more of what and that at least I'm becoming more aware of it and this whole thing of negative talk it's the oh no not again moment or we encounter a situation which is difficult and we say here we go again so our negative outlook takes I suppose prominence or gets to the top of our agenda it's going to go wrong I'm going to find myself in difficulty so fear can start rising putting on a brave face and just trying to persevere an ego telling us don't tell anybody how hard this is rather than which is where the shortcomings come in which is all about step seven my shortcomings and this is not this person my shortcomings are very simply not enough courage and faith to say hang on a minute I don't like this situation and I don't know why please help me and then we get people on side so we don't have to cover up anyway my response Hello, whoever it was. Toll certainly has an, had an, has an influence on many in understanding their own spiritual condition. This is Eckhart Toll, living in the moment of now, where spiritual exists. It's only in the moment of now where spiritual exists. There is no other moment in the timeless universe. My mother, this is me, my mum, taught yoga and studied many philosophies over the years from the 1960s and living in the moment was key in my upbringing uh, it was key for two reasons so I could enjoy what was going on and also be quite frightened by events relating to my father's behaviour bankruptcy, bailiffs on the door being young and not understanding and having to go out to work early finish my academic studies and get out there, help pay the way I wasn't the only one by the way and I don't blame him for it I forgive him for everything because he tried his best I really do believe that and he wanted it to work for us all the key in positive responses to living is knowing our negative responses are always an option too so we can turn to the positive uh, courage, faith and confidence say with a bit of courage, faith and confidence maybe I can ask for help rather than saying oh no this is frightening I'm going to cover up, put on a brave face and try and walk through this and my ego won't allow me to share that I am frightened by this depending on what is happening to us in the moment we can attach old memories to what is it we are experiencing so when my life turned 
out to be unmanageable through drinking and I was on a park bench with nowhere to go I was completely trapped in the fear of my situation and wanted no I didn't want to live I wanted to die it was a shopping place so in the steps it seems we can react with our step six defects usually starting with fear and putting on a brave face or we can react with courage and confidence to explore what is going on so step six are about defects of character for me and step seven is about my shortcomings not having enough courage faith and confidence just to have a go indeed courage and confidence right start that one again or we can react with courage and confidence to explore what is going on under the influence of addiction I was short on courage and confidence indeed courage and confidence were my prime shortcomings in those final years of alcohol addiction and don't forget I'm only an alcoholic in recovery recovery is one day long or even in the moment today I understand that I can have a step six reaction to my situation where defects run amok and fear rules or I can have courage and confidence to see the situation as it really is working through my shortcomings a step seven response to the, to the situation where courage helps me find out what is really going on and I ask for help if needed and on any given day defects may come to the fore or shortcomings may diminish my ability to cope so step f fear comes out first and my shortcomings disappear that, it, that is or rather my shortcomings manifest which is not having any courage or confidence I often suggest we can have step six days where fear rules or step seven days where courage helps us to see our way through and we can have a mixture of sixes and sevens in any given day which is, which is why it feels important to do step tens that is what disturbs us on a daily basis and a gratitude list to see the balance of how the day has turned out so on a, any given day <coughs> step tens what disturbs me daily is my reaction to negative situations where people maybe challenge me or do something which I, I feel is hurtful or harmful like try and run me down with their car when I'm on my bicycle or it could be that I forgive them straight away whoops he didn't mean to do that after all I'm no threat to him it's again in our attitude so on cert certain days we can pick out a negative thing which can just churn around inside us all day long they didn't take account of me how dare they I voted for this and that or I'm whatever defects can come out big time so if I write my step 10 what has disturbed me in that situation it's probably lack of acknowledgement I'm not having enough courage and faith to say hang on a minute what about me so gratitude for knowing what's going on is one thing what, what has disturbed me today then I'm sober I can work on what's made me fearful and what gives me confidence and mostly what gives me confidence is the realization it's okay to speak out and not know answers and be able to ask now I think I've said enough for today there are other things which are written alongside the video and what follows now is the reflections over the years from 2008 and uh, a reading of step six so I hope I get to the convention if I don't it's okay I might just stand outside and see who's there yeah I don't know if that's such a good idea but anyway yeah the weather's not so good today 25th of June that's enough more and on Don in London hello it's June 25th my video is all about recovery from addiction to either substance or behavior my substance of addiction alcohol my behavior equally addictive work relationships things people places and things anything to fix me accumulating and not working out why it never worked what was that fear inside me well it was fear of life and I didn't know it so I used alcohol as my best friend and medication anyway in this I share the daily reflections uh, from AA Alcoholics Anonymous I am one voice uh, you need to hear many voices 
to make your own mind up about what is right for you. It's always about personal choice because we are unique and authentic with this one similarity a need to be sober daily and find a spiritual path which is facing reality. So for today, a two-way street. If we ask God, if we ask, God will certainly forgive our derelictions, but in no case does he render as white as snow and keep us that way without our co cooperation. So in other words, we can backslide very quickly if we don't practice the 12 steps, live the 12 steps, a way of life to live to good conscience, open, honest and willing. When I prayed, I used to admit a lot of things for which I needed to be forgiven. I thought that if I didn't mention these things to God, or our good conscience, he would never know about them. But we do, and good conscience is in everybody. I did not know that if I had just forgiven myself for some of my past deeds, God would also forgive me. I was also taught to prepare for the journey through life, never realising until I came to AA, when I honestly became willing to be taught forgiveness and forgiving, that life itself is the journey, it's not the destination. The journey of life is a very happy one, as long as I am willing to accept change and responsibility. So in other words, I am accountable for what I do, and responsible not only for what I do on my own, but my responsibility is to other people, how I help or support. And that's a daily exercise of living in the moment. And when things are tough or when they're particularly happy, I can, be, I can have gratitude and share the serenity prayer, which is to God or good conscience. God, grant me the serenity to accept the things I cannot change, the hardships. Courage to change the things I can, less hardships maybe. And the wisdom to know the difference is just for today a balance hopefully Don in London it's uh, June 25th 2009 I'm smiling because it looks like the weather's going to be good my my videos are not about the weather actually they're all about recovery from addiction uh, my recovery from addiction was alcohol and uh, behaviour substance and behaviour were my addictions alcohol and behaviour, workaholic, relationshipaholic, any old olic, any oldism you can possibly imagine. So if you've ever in, overindulged in something on one day and felt a bit sick because of it, you have overindulged. It's a bit of a binge. It's only when you join up the binges or they become so frequent you can't identify where they start and where, where they end that possibly addiction might be a problem. And we're addicted to life, living. So if we give up things which are bad for us and stick with those which are good for us, how hard is that? Well, in this world it seems very difficult because we seem programmed, if we like something, to keep, up, keep on at it for far too long. And then the addiction comes in, where no amount of persuasion from ourselves to stop it, and no amount of persuasion from others to stop it using our self-will and willpower, it doesn't work. Why is that? simply because we're just as human as the rest of anybody. If you put us in under the cosh of a particular behaviour or substance for long enough, no matter how, I suppose, self-willed and will-powered we are, it will finally get us. And if it doesn't get us in the uh, intellectual sense, it will certainly kill us. And that's the, uh, that is the absolute tragedy of where the addictions take us. So whilst I smile a bit about how life is today, I can, because I'm in recovery, and that's just one day at a time. So what have I, who and what have I got to thank for being in recovery? Simply uh, family, community, society, professionals, and a fellowship. And a fellowship of Alcoholics Anonymous, because it is alcohol that I principally was addicted to. So for me now, to be able to sit, sit here and say I'm okay today, just means I've got the daily reprieve, which is if I don't take a drink today, I can't get drunk and if I don't take a drink today I won't think about having another one later, five minutes later, ten minutes later, one day later, ten days later, provided I keep good company where I'm included part of something and there is a way of dealing with drink or not drinking on a daily basis. So Alcoholics Anonymous is, synom is synom synonymous with sobriety for me. Uh, there are many ways to get sober and AA Alcoholics Anonymous is not the only way. 
but it works for me and I can share how it helps me but I can't share about other people and what it's doing for them simply because it's anonymous and for me that provides sanctuary to find the truth so anonymity is key to people being able to ex express their truth in a place where it's okay to do so and they're not going to get judged harshly because of it or if you do get judged harshly because of it then you're in with the wrong group of people and go find another meeting so I guess you know we're all human we are all human just making progress as we can but addiction is an absolute killer it kills the spirit it kills our emotional base and it kills us physically if we do it for long enough it's a poison and I can say that with some heartfelt not sanctimony abs absolute fear of what it did to me in the end and that fear putting on a brave face and ego I hope are utilized less these days than courage faith and confidence just to face the day as it is and uh, the AA preamble the meetings there is always a preamble which is shared whether you're an old timer or a newcomer and uh, we share it because it's about what is the fellowship, what it can do and what it can't do. It cannot fix people. People make choices based on better information and wisdom. So the preamble goes like this. Alcoholics Anonymous is a fellowship of men and women who share their experience, strength and hope with each other that they may solve their common problem and help others to recover from alcoholism, which is why I do these videos. The only requirement for membership is, is a desire to stop drinking. There are no dues or fees for AA membership. We are self-supporting through our own contributions. AA is not allied with any sect, denomination, politics, organization or institution. Does not wish to engage in any controversy, neither endorses nor opposes any causes. Our primary purpose is to stay sober and help other alcoholics to achieve sobriety. And on my way to a meeting yesterday, I bumped into somebody I know who was in the fellowship and is taking a sabbatical I guess for a long time because it didn't suit them and they're sober and they're happy now how did that happen and the gift is when we get our choices back how we live our lives and how we include or exclude influences is our own personal choice and I respect them immensely for being sober and not needing uh, I suppose the support of uh, a, a society or fellowship and their main concern was a lot of the time it sounded like it was based on fear if you do this you're going to be in trouble and uh, you know people can be condescending and I can be that way on the, these videos I suspect because if you don't want to if you don't want sobriety it's like somebody telling you uh, the worst news and it is the worst news if you're an alcoholic you have to give up that substance or is it because in the end it is killing us and it's shortening our lives and 1 in 13 according to the National Health Service in the UK has a problem with drink or binging or something so modern life is not always good for us and uh, in my videos I try to cover a bit about the uh, steps of AA a 12 step program of action to change attitude and behaviour and step 6 is all about our defects of character 7, seven deadly sins and step 7 which I'll talk about more in July is about the virtues of life so there are seven virtues as well and it's not unusual that these uh, deadly sins and virtues well they're linked of course and uh, there is a spiritual connection which is to living truthfully in the moment and whether you're religious or not or an agnostic the, uh, the sins and the virtues probably apply to everybody and the uh, I wrote them I got them off the internet so I uh, don't think I'm being clever here seven deadly sins there, there, are, there is pride which is spiritual sin envy which is spiritual sin wrath spiritual sin affected by body and the four corporal sins um, sloth uh, greed gluttony lust well there's seven for you and the virtues faith hope charity prudence temperance fortitude and justice and it then goes on to say here where I got it from humility cures pride kindness cures envy abstinence cures gluttony chastity cures lust patience cures wrath Liber liberality cures greed diligence cures sloth and uh, what, a, what a tall order we would say in AA to try and work on all of those but the good thing is we only have to do it for a day and then another day and then another one it's just a cumulative wisdom and uh, in this daily reflection book today 
I've got time for it, a two-way street. And, uh, you know, when I say God, it's the God of your understanding or your good conscience or whatever higher power you're, you're currently in favour of. And um, I don't know where I am on any daily basis. I could be an agnostic, an atheist or a believer. It just depends how the day's going, doesn't it, and what's happening to us. But it says here, if we ask God or good conscience... Uh, will certainly forgive our derelictions but in no case does he render as white as snow and keeps us that way without our cooperation that comes from the 12 steps and 12 traditions it goes on to say when I prayed I used to admit a lot of things for which I needed to be forgiven I thought that if I didn't mention these things to God or good conscience although they're still in there he would never know about them I did not know that if I had just forgiven myself for some of my past deeds God would forgive me also I was always taught to prepare for the journey through life, never realising that until I came to AA, when I honestly became willing to be taught forgiveness and forgiving, that life itself is the journey. The journey of life is a very happy one, as long as I am willing to accept change and responsibility. And those 12 steps are all about attitude and behaviour change. So from moving from the sins to the virtues, you know, we're not looking for perfection because it, that's an impossibility. And the only step of AA which can actually help us keep 100% on track is observing step one. If we take a drink, uh, we are powerless over it if, once we've taken it, and life will become unmanageable. So that's called the 100% step if you stay sober. And sober can be looked at so many different ways. And I'm glad that AA helps me. And I'm also pleased when I hear that other people have found another path which suits them. Absolutely, we need more than one way, and that's what Bill Wilson, one of the co-founders, suggested long ago. We must not get arrogant about uh, fellowship. Anyway, it's time to go. So the serenity prayer, God, grant me the serenity to accept the things I cannot change, courage to change the things I can, and the wisdom to know the difference just for today. Good morning, Don in London, and it's June 25th, 2008, around about 7.30, 7.45 in the morning. Good morning from London, and uh, Wednesday morning. Quite an interesting 24 hours, I often say this, and uh, maybe life is more interesting because I'm simply in recovery. And being in recovery from an addiction to alcohol, I rely on different parts of my life to work with, uh, different elements of people I meet. <clears throat> I wonder if that's the right way of saying it, I don't know. But uh, I go to the Fellowship of AA, that's Alcoholics Anonymous, every day if I can, just to recalibrate how I'm looking at the world and trying to make sure I'm living in the day. And living in the day for me is the key to making my life work. It means I'm present in this ever-present moment of now. And that's without denials and without filters, or with less denial than usual or less filters than usual because my head can push things away and uh, I can get off beam very quickly. Anyway, what is, it, what is this about recovery? Uh, fellowship for me works and the Alcoholics Anonymous preamble, which is read out at every meeting, hopefully, uh, gives the game away really and it goes like this. Alcoholics Anonymous is a fellowship of men and women who share their experience, strength and hope with each other that they may solve their common problem and help others to recover from alcoholism. The only requirement for membership is a desire to stop drinking. There are no dues or fees for AA membership. We are self-supporting through our own contributions. AA is not allied with any sex, denomination, politics, organisation or institution. It does not wish to engage in any controversy, neither endorses nor opposes any causes. Our primary purpose is to stay sober and help other alcoholics to achieve sobriety. Um, yes, that puts me in the right frame of mind to talk about my last 24 hours and what I'm doing today. <coughs> and yesterday was a, a bit of a catch-up on things which I need to do to maintain my sobriety and also try and make life work a little bit easier. And uh, one of the things I did do was ring up the uh, de Department of Vehicles and Licensing, DDLA, whatever it's called these days, and ask them what I need to do to get my license back. And the reason why I don't have my license at the moment, <coughs> excuse me, is simply uh, having got type 1 diabetes a couple of years ago uh, and not knowing what sort of diabetes and what sort of uh, problems and mi mishaps I might have your license is automatically revoked for a year until you know what is going on, what may happen and what, whether or not I may drive. So I rang them up and uh, having gone through a rigmarole of different 
voice messages and turns and twists I actually got to see or speak to a human being and it's good to find a human being at the end of a, uh, a sort of answer phone service but the other kicker in there is it's 50 pence a minute so I reckon it probably cost me about five pounds to find a human and I guess that's the way it is it's not for me to argue against how they use their telephone system it's how to get my license back and I reckon I can because I know where I am with the type 1 diabetes these days so that was project one underway um, then also uh, I have a concession to go swimming again because of my physical impairments I get the opportunity to uh, go swimming at the local uh, municipal baths if I want to so I, I sorted that one out and um, I got there about midday and apparently you can only do your new membership after one o'clock or between one and four and I said fine I'll come back and then they said oh well never mind let's do it now because it's quiet so that was done and what was a jobs worth uh, possibility that is sticking to the rules exactly became an opportunity to just get things done and that happened so if we don't push too hard against people and accept what they say often we just get what we need which is simply to deal with life as it is and get, get out of it what we can and uh, I was at a meeting last night it's one of these so, sort of nomadic meetings which get, keeps getting pushed up here there and everywhere and it's normally at Christchurch now which is just a bit further down Flood Street and then into another side avenue can't remember the name of it and it's the 7.30 ex Radnor Walk meeting and it's been all over the place to Pond Place to the World's End uh, then to Christchurch then back to the hut last night for one night only and it was a very small group and it was a very tight knit and informative sharing of experience, strength and hope just as it may be and Jobsworth came up again and unfortunately somebody else had a different point of view to mine which is to let it go and they, they hang on to it and they start to uh, rail against rules, regulations and why isn't it my way and I know if I don't get it my way I need to let it go because it will burn me more than it ever burns the person who is saying I've got the rules and I've got to do it this way so I'm learning just gradually that you know what in the day just letting things happen and again with the library I've been paying full whack for some of the services when in fact I'm actually allowed to have those services at a reduced rate because I'm a low, low income person and I never knew this until day before yesterday but again it's just a simple paperwork exercise to make sure that I can uh, get facilities at a, a better a better price I guess so gentle things for me yesterday and getting a lot done too I've still got to check on my uh, my pension and stuff like that but that just sort of makes me very depressed I know it's nothing very much to shout about but um, it doesn't make me depressed I just have to accept it where it is sometimes uh, the future can depress us if we go too far forwards so keeping it in the day is really the answer anyway I've gone a bit far ahead and talked a lot uh, daily reflections for today uh, June, 20, June 25th two way street if we ask God or good conscience will certainly forgive our derelictions but in no case does he render us white as snow and keep us that way without our cooperation and that comes from the 12 steps and 12 traditions it goes on to say when I prayed I used to admit a lot of things for which I needed to be forgiven I thought if I didn't mention these things to God he would never know about them I did not know that if I had just forgiven myself for some of my past deeds God would forgive me also I was always taught to prepare for the journey through life never realizing until I came to AA when I honestly became willing to be taught forgiveness and forgiving that life itself is, a, is the journey the journey of life is a very happy one as long as I'm willing to accept change and responsibility and I guess that's true because you know uh, the real answer to a lot of this is if we can forgive ourselves what we have done then we need, need to forgive everybody who was involved in calamities or successes uh, at, their, at our expense and you know who do I not forgive these days I don't know that there is anyone I don't forgive 
but I also recognise uh, there are consequences either to my actions or to other people's actions and whether or not I'm in their lives or, or not. So there are co consequences and forgiveness of self is uh, paramount because otherwise how can we forgive anybody else for what they do to us on a daily basis and prejudice abounds, it's just there. So if I forget and don't judge people I'm much better with life. Coming on to As Bill Sees It, and I'm running a bit late on time, this one. And <coughs> for the 25th, it says, Community Problem, page 180. The answer to the problem of alcoholism seems to be in education, education in schoolrooms, in medical colleges, among clergymen and employers, in families, and in the public at large. From grave to grave, the drunk and the potential alcoholic will have to be completely surrounded by a true and deep understanding and by a continuous barrage of information. This means factual education properly presented. Heretofore, much of this education has attacked the immorality of drinking rather than the illness of alcoholism, and that's the stigma. Now, who is going to do all this education? Obviously, it is both a community job and a job for specialists. Individually, we AAs can help, but AA as such cannot and should not get directly into this field. Therefore, we must rely on other agencies or on outside friends and their willingness to supply great amounts of money and effort. And as one in 13 of the adult population in the UK is uh, dependent in some way on alcohol, that's one in 13 of the adult population. So if you go past six houses, there's one potential alcoholic in there. It means that uh, it is a big, big problem, and it's far beyond the boundaries of the Fellowship of AA to even engage in any meaningful way. What AA can do is provide sanctuary for alcoholics trying to find recovery, but it cannot stop the problem. And uh, I know that, because it's the devil in the detail of living that often affords the luxury of drink to take the edge off and then finally blind us to our particular situation of addiction. Anyway, time is up. More, to, more later. Don in London, hello. My video is all about recovery from addiction to either substance or behaviour. My addictive substance, alcohol, my behaviour equally addictive around people, places and things. So these days, sober one day at a time, and that's what seems to work. Live in the day, live in the moment, find my spiritual connection to living in the, in the moment of now. Spiritual life is real life, everything is spiritual. So all those 35 years of drinking were spiritual, and what follows on one day at a time is also spiritual. I suppose really the question is for anyone, what quality of spiritual do we enjoy best and only a person can make up their own mind what is best for them so I share about what helped me into recovery and to be sober one day at a time with the help and aid of fellowship that fellowship is AA and today I just want to read from this book 12 steps and 12 traditions which is the backbone I guess of much of what the fellowship is about 12 steps so we can live well open honest and willing and the 12 traditions in fellowship unity service and recovery sounds like the dog downstairs is not having a good time so what is AA I just share off the preamble which is on this little card which explains to anyone what the fellowship is there to do to include people around being sober one day at a time and living a spiritual life knowing what our feelings are and not drinking so what is AA? Alcoholics Anonymous is a fellowship of men and women who share their experience, strength and hope with each other that they may solve their common problem and help others to recover from alcoholism the only requirement for membership is a desire to stop drinking there are no dues or fees for AA membership we are self-supporting through our own contributions. AA is not allied with any sect, denomination, politics, organisation or institution. Does not wish to engage in any controversy, neither endorses nor opposes any causes. 
Our primary purpose is to stay sober and help other alcoholics to achieve sobriety. So it's all about being included. The only requirement for membership is a desire to stop drinking. And what you make of your life with the help of fellowship and the 12 steps and the 12 traditions and the big book of AA and how you come to live life is as it works for you as an individual because we are all unique and authentic on our life path as we are. So we try not to tell each other what to do. But there are some principles involved and the principles in the 12 steps and 12 tra traditions help us to find a sober life. And uh, June for me is all about step six. So I share the step and also a commentary about how it works for me. And step six, it says here, we were ready, or rather were entirely ready to have God remove all these defects of character. So what are defects? And what are assets? Or what are our liabilities and what are our assets? It probably boils down to, the, in the biblical sense, the seven deadly, seven deadly sins and also the seven virtues, the opposite. And if you look on the internet, you'll find many a version, and here's just a version which I picked up quite quickly. Right, so, pride is excessive belief in one's own abilities that interferes with the individual's recognition of the grace of God. It has been called the sin from which all others arise. Pride is also known as vanity. So pride is the first deadly sin, or defect. Envy is the desire for others, traits, status, abilities, or situation. Gluttony, the third one, is an inordinate desire to consume more than, one, than, more than that which one requires. Lust is an inordinate craving for the pleasures of the body. Anger is manifested in the individual who spurns love and opts instead for fury. It is also known as wrath, wrath or wrath. Sloth is the avoidance of physical or spiritual work. And the opposite, if you like, the seven contrary virtues. Humility, kindness, abstinence, chastity, patience, liberality, diligence. And the country virtues were derived from the battle for uh, the, the poem, an epic poem written by Prudentius, circa 410 AD, an epic poem written. Practicing these virtues is alleged to protect one against temptation toward the seven deadly sins, humility against pride, kindness against envy, abstinence against gluttony, chastity against lust, patience against anger, liberality against greed and diligence against sloth. So, very black and white, you're either one or the other. But in real life, what are we? We're all of those things at different times in our lives. And although the seven deadly sins and the seven virtues may sound quite old-fashioned, we all have some sort of traits around those issues. And the twelve steps of the fellowship try to address this in in the way I understand it in step 6 and step 7 so step 6 is all about my defects of character and step 7 is all about my shortcomings so my defects of character are the sins and my shortcomings are not enough of the virtues short on virtue but in there somewhere is modern life and life as it is today and the changing values of society but around that is a personal code so these 12 steps principles these 12 steps are about developing our own personal code of living and how we do that is entirely up to us no one's going to stop us doing it another way and if they were trying to stop us our sins or deadly sins of pride would get in the way we get stubborn and defiant often or I did so, step six in the fellowship program reads as this, with a bit of commentary from me. And don't forget, this is just a personal understanding. It's your understanding in the end which counts. And where do you get your personal understanding? From life. And also listening to the many voices in society, and probably in the fellowship of AA, 
if you stick around long enough. So, we're entirely ready to have God remove all these defects of character. This is the step that separates the men from the boys, or the women from the girls. So de declares a well-loved clergyman who happens to be one of AA's greatest friends. He goes on to explain that any person capable of enough willingness and honesty to try repeatedly, step six, yes, he goes on to explain that any person capable of enough willingness and honesty to try repeatedly step six on all his, his faults, without any reservations whatever, has indeed come a long way spiritually, and is therefore entitled to be called a man who is sincerely trying to grow in the image and likeness of his own creator. And again, don't get hung up on creator, it's the God of your understanding, or a power greater than you which counts in this. The common good often is used or utilised. Of course, the often disputed question of whether God can and will under certain, certain conditions remove defects of character will be answered with a prompt affirmative by almost any AA member. To him, this proposition will be no theory at all. It will be just about the largest fact in his life. He will usually offer his proof in a statement like this. Sure, I was beaten, absolutely licked. My own willpower just wouldn't work on alcohol. Change of scene, the best efforts of family, friends, doctors and clergymen got no place with my alcoholism. I simply couldn't stop drinking, and no human being could seem to do the job for me. But when I became willing to clean house, that's step four, and then asked a, a higher power, God as I understand him, to give me release my obsessions to drink vanished. He was lifted right out of me. Well, it didn't quite work that way because I was a stubborn son of a gun and I thought I knew better for a long time. But when I got to fellowship, I found there were a lot of people who had given up on pride and said self-will will run riot and willpower will fail. And it was right. So I listened to the many voices if God works through people the wisdom came quick and easy for me so I stuck around for quite a while shivering with, with fear another one of my defects until I could keep on listening to what was working for other people and then I started to learn in AA meetings all over the world statements just like this are heard daily it is plain for everybody to see that each sober AA member has been granted a release from this very obstinate and potentially fatal obsession. So in a very complete and literal way all AAs have become entirely ready to have God remove the mania for alcohol from their lives and God has pr proceeded to do exactly that. And I would add to that, as long as I keep on asking for help on a daily basis and listening and learning from others how to live life beyond, beyond just stopping drinking then my defects of character seem to diminish. Personality traits don't go away completely, they just don't. But if we ask on a daily basis, at least we have a, a good chance that we will operate more to our virtues than our defects. When men and women pour so much alcohol into themselves that they destroy their lives, they commit a most unnatural act. Defying their instinctive desire for self-preservation, they seem bent upon self-destruction. They work against their, best, their own deepest instinct. As they are humbled by the terrific beating administered by alcohol, the grace of God can enter them and expel their obsession. And uh, I guess the grace of God for me is keeping on learning, and as it says, humility, kindness, abstinence, chastity, patience, liber liberality and diligence. So working on sober rather than working on the next drink. Here, their powerful instinct to live can cooperate fully with their creator's desires to give them new life, for nature and God alike abhor suicide. But most of our other difficulties don't fall under such a category at all. Every normal person wants, for example, to eat, to reprodu reproduce, to be somebody in society, in the society of his fellows and he wishes to be reasonably safe and secure as he tries to attain these things. Indeed, God made him that way. 
He did not design man to destroy himself by alcohol, but he did give him give man instincts to help him stay alive. It is nowhere evidence evident, at least in this life, that our Creator expects us to fully eliminate our instinctive drives. Indeed that would be foolish to think that. So far as we know, it is nowhere on record that God has completely removed from any human being all his natural drives. Indeed that would be unnatural. Since most of us are born with an abundance of natural desires, it isn't strange that we often let these far exceed their intended purpose. And that's to do with our thinking and and our vices, I guess. When they drive us blindly, or we willfully demand that they supply us with more satisfactions or pleasures than are possible or due to us, that is the point at which we depart from the degree of perfection that God wishes for us here on earth, or as nature intended. That is the measure of our character defects, or if you wish, our sins. If we ask, God will certainly forgive all our derelictions, but in no case does he render us as white as snow and keep us that way without our co cooperation. That is something we are supposed to be willing to work towards ourselves. He asks only that we try as best we know how to make progress in the building of character. So indeed it is about building of character, and if we think about our youth where all our instincts and drives and desires were out of control as we came into adulthood and then we find that we had to live in a society where we had to live to the norms and of course drink is not one of them to excess and then addiction but of course every other behaviour can be in that addiction too as many have found so step six we're entirely ready to have God remove all these defects of character is AA's way of stating the best possible attitude one can take in order to make a beginning on this lifetime job in other words to find balance in our natural drives and living so that we can be included in society. This does not mean that we expect all of our char yes, character defects to be lifted out of us as the drive to drink was. A few of them may be, but with most of them we shall have to be content with patient improvement. And that's the game, progress not perfect because if we tried to be perfect from day one we would fail we, we would be back on pride and self-will the key words entirely ready underline the fact that we want to aim at the very best we know or can learn how many of us have this degree of readiness in an absolute sense practically nobody has it the best we can do with all honesty that, can, that we can summon is to try to have it even then the best of us will discover to our dismay that there is always a sticking point a point at which we say no I can't give this up yet and we should often tread on even more dangerous ground when we cry this I will never give up such is the power of our instincts to overreach themselves no matter how far we have progressed desires will always be found which oppose the grace of God or as some say nature and providence as we've got to where we are in our nature and providence that is as the world is today some who feel they have done the well may dispute this so let's try to think about it a little further practically everybody wishes to be rid of his most glaring and destructive handicaps no one wants to be so proud that he is scorned as a braggart nor so greedy that he is labelled a thief no one wants to be angry enough to murder lustful enough to rape gluttonous enough to ruin his health no one wants to be agonized by the chronic pain of envy or to be paralyzed by sloth. Of course, most human beings don't suffer these defects at, defects at these rock bottom levels. We who have escaped these extremes are apt to congratulate ourselves. Yet can we? After all, hasn't it been self-interest, pure and simple, that has enabled us, most of us to escape? Not much spiritual effort is involved in avoiding excesses which will bring us punishment anyway, but when we face up to the less violent aspects of these very same defects, then where do we stand? And this is where it's about you and your, you and your understanding of life, however it turns out to be. What we must recognize now is that we exult in some of our defects we really love them. Who, for example, doesn't like to feel just a little superior to the next fellow, 
or even quite a lot superior? Isn't it true that we like to let greed masquerade as ambition? To think of liking lust seems impossible. But how many men and women speak love with their lips and believe what they say, so that they can hide lust in a dark corner of their minds? And even whilst staying within conventional bounds, many people have to admit that their imaginary sex excursions are apt to be all dressed up as dreams of romance. Indeed, we can talk ourselves into anything. I know this. I've done it. Self-righteous anger also can be very enjoyable. In a perverse way, we can actually take satisfaction from the fact that many people annoy us, for it brings a comfortable feeling of superiority. Gossip barbed with our anger, and I'm right, I'm smiling there, because it's very easy to become self-righteous in recovery. I mean, the simple answer is, the more self-righteous we are, the more we are dogmatic, the more we are stubborn and defiant about something we believe there is one path, and it happens to be mine. And what I've learned in recovery, my path, if I stick with it defiantly and stubbornly, I'll start to stumble and fall down pretty darn quickly, because I need the input and in inclusion of everyone in my life. Gossip barred with our anger, a polite form of murder by character assassination, has its satisfactions for us too. Here we are not trying to help those we criticise, we are trying to proclaim our own righteousness. And uh, <coughs> I know this from things which have happened today. Self-righteousness doesn't do me or anybody else any good. But if you point it out to another person that they're being self-righteous, am I not also being self-righteous? Because I'm developing the argument. So sometimes uh, in the fellowship we say desist of pen and tongue because there is nothing to add and nothing to be gained by it, even though we like to do it, and to an extent I can do it too, even now. And then I think to myself, I must laugh at myself and stop it because I don't know what is right for you. And if I don't know what's right for you, how do I know what's right for me? Which is why I always say I need to keep on learning. When gluttony is less than ruinous, we have a milder word for that too. We call it taking our comfort. We live in a world riddled with envy, to a greater or lesser degree. Everybody is infected with it. From this defect we must surely get a warped yet definite satisfaction. Else, why would we consume such great amounts of time wishing for what we have not, rather than working for it, or angrily looking for attributes we shall never have, instead of adjusting to the fact and accepting it? And how often we work hard with no better motive than to be secure and slothful later on. Only we call it only we call that retiring. Consider too our talents for pr procrastination, which is really sloth in five syllables. Nearly anyone can make a good list of the of such defects as these, and few of us would be se would seriously think of giving them up, at least until they cause us excessive misery. And without a doubt, if we go hell for leather in one direction, thinking we're right, and we wonder why nobody's following us, we do get somewhat alienated and, and messed up. But if we don't stop giving up those ideas that we're always right, or that my way or the highway is the right way, then we are alone again and isolated. And we may not drink, but we're certainly not as sober as we could be. Some people, of course, may conclude that they are indeed ready to have all such defects taken from them, but even these people, if they construct a list of still milder defects, will be obliged to admit that they prefer to hang on to some of them. Therefore it seems plain that few of us can quickly or easily become ready to aim at spiritual and moral perfection. We want to settle for only as much perfection as, it will, as will get us by in life, according, of course, to our various and sundry ideas of what will get us by. So the difference between the boys and the men is the difference between striving for a self-determined objective and for the per perfect objective which is God, of God. Yeah, so we progress and are not perfect. We realise some of our potential, but our defects of character will get in the way if they remain out of balance and we hang on to them. Many, many will ask at once ask 
How can we accept the entire implication of step six? Why? That is perfection. This sounds like a hard question, but practically speaking, it isn't. Only step one, where we made the 100% admission, we were powerless over alcohol, can be practiced with absolute perfection. The remaining 11 steps state perfect ideals. So, perfect ideals. So, strict adherence to the steps is about perfect ideals. But, you know, strict adherence on a daily basis, life is happening around us and we're going to be pushed and pulled in all sorts of ways. So, defects as well as virtues will be around. There are goals towards which we look and the measuring sticks by which we estimate our progress. Seen in this light, step six is still difficult but not at all impossible. The only urgent thing is that we make a beginning and keep trying. And that's it. We make a beginning and keep trying. So contingent on the day we ask for help and refocus ourselves around the virtues humility, kindness, abstinence, chastity, patience, liberality and diligence. We are on a better wicket, if you like, if you're a cricketer. If we would gain any real advantage in the use of this step on problems other than alcohol, we shall need to make a brand new venture into open-mindedness. We shall need to raise our eyes towards perfection and be ready to walk in that direction. It will seldom matter how haltingly we walk the only question will be, are we ready? So, contingent on the day we ask, are we ready to let go righteousness and every other excessive, excessive outlook or personality trait? Are we ready? And the only answer is, yes, really. Or, if, you're, if we are stubborn and, and defiant and angry, the answer may be no. So we keep on trying. Looking again at those defects we are still unwilling to give up, we ought to erase the hard and fast lines that we have drawn. Perhaps we shall be obliged in some cases still to say, this I cannot give up yet. But we should not say to ourselves that I will never give up. Let's dispose of what happen appears to be a hazardous open end we have left. It is suggested that we ought to become entirely willing to aim towards perfection. We know that some delay, however, might be pardoned. That word in the mind of a rationalising alcoholic could, con could certainly be given a long-term meaning. He could say, how very easy, sure, I'll head towards perfection, but I'm certainly not going to hurry. Maybe I can postpone dealing with some of my problems indefinitely. Of course, this won't do. Such a bluffing of oneself will have to go the way of many another pleasant rationalisation. At the very least, we shall have to come to grips with some of our worst character defects and take action towards their removal as quickly as possible. Or well, complete understanding that defects of character can come up in any moment of the day if we are provoked, or we provoke others. The moment we say no, never, our minds close against the grace of God, or common sense. After all, what else would God's word be beyond common sense and wisdom for the common man? We're not talking rocket science here, we're talking common sense. Delay is dangerous and rebellion may be fatal. This is the exact point at which we abandon limited objective and move towards God's will for us, as nature intended, nature and providence. All these wonderful words I like because... You know, spiritual is now. Spiritual is in the moment. It's not tomorrow and it's not yesterday. Although every experience we've had brings us to this spiritual moment of now. And either we accept life on life's terms, acceptance is the key always, or we get into trouble again. And it's being defiant or angry against our situation often, that life isn't giving us what we think we deserve. So just a reminder, the contrary virtues were derived as follows yeah. humility against pride kindness against envy abstinence against gluttony chastity against lust patience against anger liberality against greed and diligence against sloth and step six the seven deadly sins or removal of them is subject to asking on a daily basis, how am I going to live today? How do I want to behave? 
How do I want to be open, honest and willing to change my attitude and behaviour to fit my circumstances? And do my feelings fit my life right now? If we've been good in our step four, life story, and expressed it and shared it with another human being and to our creator as we choose, then step six defects fall out of that life story quite easily. And also our shortcomings, the virtues, which is all about step seven. I don't know that we can take six and seven in isolation. I can have a step six day full of defects of character if I'm stubborn and defiant and go back to my old behaviour. Or I can have a better day with a bit of courage, faith, confidence around humility, kindness, abstinence, chastity, patience, liberality and diligence. And I'm a slow learner and often have been a poor student in the past. I was criticised deeply by someone when they, I said I was a poor student in the past or I could be a poor student and it was pounced upon as a defect. It's a defect to keep on point, pointing it out. My defect would be not to say it, if you get my drift. So these are my views and understandings of step, step six and seven. So how does it work for me on a daily basis? Well, in the morning I say, how am I feeling, why, and what can I do? If I feel okay, given my current situation, my feelings fit my, my experience right now, then life is understandable and comprehensible. I can, I can get on with it. But if my feelings don't fit my current reality, my feelings are over the top in some way, in a particular direction of those defects or sins or well, my virtues are without foundation courage, faith and confidence over elated I need to, to ask myself why am I feeling this way and that's not to actually analyse to death how am I feeling, why and what can I do is a very great starting point I don't know how I feel right now why? because I haven't given it a second of thought what can I do Consider my options today. Or well, if I wake up angry, fearful, resentful, or just feeling like I can't cope or I don't know what to do, then I need a bit more courage, faith and confidence. And I often get that by ringing somebody up or making contact with another human being. Not necessarily in fellowship, but somebody who I love and loves me back. And that's unconditional love. It's not dependent on anything else other than love to and from people who care. Something my father said, he wished he had cherished my mother more and been less superficial and indifferent. And I think that sums it up. Cherish always and less superficial and less indifferent. And the only way I can be that way is to understand my own life and how I relate to other people. So the steps work for me daily because in mind and in meditation it's about what is the next right thing for everyone, inclusively and not just me. So I'm merely a player and I'm not the chief critic anymore, I hope. Although I will be chief critic in my own life, often, and sometimes flail at others and be critical but it does me no good, and it does them no good. Step 6, June. Step 7, July. I can have a bit of both in each day. I can have a fairly bad start, or a fairly good start. Enough courage, faith and confidence to keep on going. Or I could have fear, brave facing and ego in my heart. It's as life is. And it's often better if I talk to another human being, or get to a fellowship meeting, where I can see what is working for others so I can join in and be a part of again freedom to choose life life on life's terms always a unique and authentic path for each person and in fellowship with one similarity a desire to be sober today the serenity prayer is where I finish all my videos hopefully to do with recovery without the screeching of the police cars going past on gracious me 
a typical London night where I live. Anyway, serenity prayer. Yes, I even sleep through all of that during the night, often, and then get told about it by my neighbours. So to God or in good conscience, the serenity prayer is as follows. God, grant me the serenity to accept the things I cannot change, courage to change the things I can, and the wisdom to know the difference for me is just for today.